Welcome everybody to Talking Synths. We're, we're doing this one from Anaheim, California at the NAMM show. You may recognize this character. Dr. Synth, all the way from, uh, Dr. Mix, all the way from uh, the UK. Thank you, hello. Yeah, and wel welcome. It's, it's great to finally meet you. We've kind of uh, jabbed back and forth over the internet, talked yeah. on the phone, and uh, yeah. we commented a few, back and forth. <laughs> yeah, we exchanged a few emails. You were super kind, and you, you sent me quite a bit of stuff, including the beautiful CV pedal that oh, I yeah, use on yeah. my mini log. Yeah, great. Thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. It's, uh, we, we love your videos, too. And here, here at NAMM, all kind of crazy things happen, and you just discovered you had another fan that you didn't know about earlier? Yeah, I, uh, so uh, I have a little bit of an advantage because I'm doing these videos for Rhodes. You know, they just released the Mark 8. So I get to hang out there, you know, I, I, you know, do some demos, you know, made quite a few videos. And, uh, and here comes Stevie Wonder, and he's there and he's playing, and uh, the bodyguard goes, are you with the organization? Are you with the roads? And I go, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and then Stevie is, is playing. I'm there with uh, the camera, like literally at, like one meter away from him. And I'm, of course, the camera is shaking. <laughs> and at some point, this cool kid comes to me and says, hey, man, I'm a big fan of your channel. Hey, you're very talented, blah, blah. Gives me lots of compliments. And I go, oh, wow, cool. So you are with the organization? Yeah, I'm Stevie's son. And it's like my, I got like a brain glitch right there. And he said, I, I play your videos all the time, blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, just put, him, put me out, out of my misery because this is life-changing information. <laughs> Was there ever a time where you were in a room with your dad and you were playing one of my videos? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> he said, yeah, sure. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> That's a great story. Can you imagine? Yeah. All kind of crazy stuff happens in now. Yeah, but that's why we come here, right? Because yeah. we, we really get to hang out. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to finally see you in three dimensions. Yeah. So. <laughs> you know that you look like just like in the video. <laughs> <laughs> and you do too. <laughs> and you sound like it. <laughs> you know, one other crazy thing I've noticed at NAMM, these guys walking around with submachine guns and... Yep. Uh, that's wild. And then when yeah. we were filming some other stuff, we were on the fifth floor of the Hilton, in a hotel room looking out and I looked at the roof and there's a there's like a sniper like, station yeah. up there there's there's a yeah two two security guys yeah. up on the roof in a little enclosure you know it's a trade off you know security privacy and yeah. you know it's we we haven't figured that out as humans i think boy <laughs> we're trying hard we we need to get to an answer soon boy things are yeah, things are but crazy. You know, you know what? What if there is actually, you know, somebody who hey. doesn't mean too well to us? It's yeah. I'd rather have a sniper up there. Sure, exactly. Uh, you know, it's, it just yeah, it feels, feels so weird. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. right. Yeah, well, I was just playing the OBX8. What did you? Okay, what did you think? I I like it. It sounds great. Uh, of course, any demo of a synth in NAM with all this crazy noise and the din yeah. going on, it's, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, so I I mean I'm just kind of popping through presets and tweaking the filter and stuff. It sounds good. Did, did you play good. it? I, yeah, I, I played it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. I played it, and uh, so it's got that factor that, um, you know, some synths, you, you select a sound, and you immediately start to play, and, and you come up with the ideas, and mm -hmm. the synth makes, makes, makes you play it, makes yeah. you like to play it. Generates so, your creativity. Exactly, yeah. so it does that. Yeah. Um, and then there were, like, some sounds that clearly said, okay, there is some advanced uh, LFO and um, uh, some kind of control that allowed it to go ping, 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 So you, and that's not quite common to all sims, that, that not many do that. And um, so it definitely has some stuff that's awesome. I want to hear it in the studio just to, just, understand the low end and you yeah. know the credibility down there because as we know you know that it that, that credibility is a lot in the low end and I really want to spend some time with it yeah it sounds smooth and nice so I, I, mm. I like the overall sound of it yeah and uh, anything with Tom Oberheim's name on it I'm a sucker for go figure you know he's a legend yeah 
and I, I got to meet him for the first time this time show, so that was cool. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, I got to shake his hand. Unfortunately, it was under terrible circumstances because we just lost Dave Smith right yep. before this happened, and Tom and Dave were very close. They were supposed to make a presentation at the Tech Awards, which we went to last night, and, uh, and Dave Smith, the Prophet 5, won the Tech Award for something or another. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Lucas? I, I don't know what they call them, call them all, but uh, it, it was really nice to see that. And um, Dave, I can't remember David, his last name, but the CEO of of Sequential went up and accepted it and gave a gave a pretty moving speech and testimonial. Uh, but boy, there are a lot of people that are hurting from Dave Smith yep. being gone. Mm. And uh, we we've kind of been putting together a little bit of a tribute to him and we got a lot of people on camera giving very heartfelt things and we didn't get them crying afterwards and you know tear, tears flowed and yeah he was he was such a well-liked kind wonderful person that uh, yeah it's it's a real blow to the industry yeah well lost. I know I saw you at the uh, at the UVI booth. yeah and that was some incredible sounds coming out of that. Yep, so, so UVI, I've been knowing them for quite a while, so we've been doing some, some videos together. And uh, yeah, what, what this time, what shocked me is that um, uh, the, the guy who, who um, Tom, uh, Thomas, Thomas uh, came and started layering mm -hmm. things on, uh, on, on the platform um, uh, and uh, and it started to become like this sort of super, super sound, super machine. So you would have like a, uh, like a Wurlitzer as a basis. And then he put this sort of arpeggiator, but it wasn't an arpeggiator. It, uh, it, was, it was like dynamic. And, uh, and then there was some string to it. And then he added some bells to it. And before I knew, it sounded like, like Vangelis. Yeah. It was like, like an orchestral experience that mm -hmm. uh, Wow, that was incredible. At some point, there were like 400 voices, voice count going. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was really like 400 voice. Wow. Can you imagine if we thought of, you know, a synthesizer with 400 voice in 1975? Yeah. <laughs> imagine yeah. that. It would have looked like this room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for me as a spectator, what I thought was really cool as you were playing, the, the stereo field was just so full and moving and I mean, it wasn't sweeping. Different stuff was happening mm. all over the place, and it mm. was just huge sounding. It, it was, was really huge, nice. and, and also the low end was crazy. I have to say, I, for the first time, I appreciated fully the focal uh, uh, speakers. Uh -huh. Have you seen those focal speakers? Uh -uh. Man, those, those, they, they sound like more like midfield rather than near field, but the low end was really rattling my body, and I was like, what? I, I think I should have some of, some of that in my studio, <laughs> you know, because, you know, of course, in, in, in the studio we have, you know, super calibrated and everything's like super uh, measured because, of course, you know, the, the, especially the mastering room, you, you right. got to have a clear reference because, yeah. you know, you don't, you don't mess about with low end. And, uh, but, you know, for once to have a couple of speakers that just blast you with pure, low energy and it's so clear and so focused, I think I'm going to check out those focal uh, speakers for sure. Nice. But yeah, that, you know, um, UVI have been around for, for a while. They know what they're doing. They have a collection of analog synthesizers that's scary. Once they came with a DX1, which you have shown on the videos, right? Right. right? right. Did you, what did you, uh, refurbished one? What did you do? I yeah, well, we, we bought one. Well, the story started with Chuck Surak from Sweetwater. Uh, he and I were conversing. I said, if you're ever looking for a synthesizer, uh, we can help you find it. And he said, ah, oh, Yamaha DX1. And I'm thinking, oh, great. One, there's only 140 of them made, and probably half of those are gone now. So yeah, we'll find you one. Well, we found him one. <laughs> yeah, I remember and, when and you went with it. a synth mobile. Yeah. <laughs> and you went to catch it. What a great idea, man. L look, I, l I really, really love your videos, and I Oh, thank I, you. Yeah, I think I find out about them like really, uh, you know, I, I have no idea how I ended up on one of them. Dude, I was 
hooked. I, I watched every single episode, one after the other, went back to, to watch them again. Did I get in touch with you first or did you get in touch with me first? I think you, you commented on one and we thought, Dr. Mix, he's a cool guy, we love his videos. So we commented yeah. back and then yeah, and that's then, right. And then eventually I, I found you and... Yeah. yeah, I mean, your angle is absolutely amazing, you know, uh, of, you know, people who, who actually repair them, but also collect them. And, and, and also, you know, the spare parts and all the culture and the jokes, the pranks that you play to each other. It's oh, like, it's like there's nothing like that in the synth world. I mean, you're, you're really unique and you are one of the, the people that I like to follow the most on YouTube, like well, for real. thank you. We, we, we stole the format basically from, you know, car shows and American pickers and shows like that that do the that's same clever. sort of thing. That's yeah. clever. But you need to know how to do it. That's, that's the thing. In fact, when I was looking at it, I was thinking, this looks like one of those yeah, like American shows or car shows or yeah. um, uh, like uh, Orange County Choppers, yeah, you know, exactly. that, that, sort of, that sort of style. Yeah, I used, I used to watch that and I don't care a thing about motorcycles, but the, the, the people in the format and the drama and everything made it so compelling and made you want to watch. So well I done. thought if we can do that with synthesizers. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> and it's a family yeah. affair because your, your whole family supports in that, right? There's your wife in the... In, yeah, in my the wife. videos, there, there are all the people who work there. Yeah, my, my wife works uh, pretty much full time for us. My son used to, but then he graduated college and went off and get, got a real job that pays a lot better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter every now and then uh, d does some stuff with us. But So I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate <laughs> with that. I always say to parents, get them into synths early so they won't have money for drugs. <laughs> 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 That's good. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a, a friend who collects guitars, and, and he's got an amazing guitar collection that must be worth a fortune. And he said when he was growing up and in college, all his friends were spending money on drugs, he was spending money on guitars. So. All right, so I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. All right. I would like you to tell me the three top favorite synthesizers that you own <laughs> and your favorite synthesizer that you do not own? Ooh, my favorite one that I do not own, I used to own, a Matrix 12. And, and like we were just talking with the OBX8, how you sit down and you just want to play. I could turn that Matrix 12 on. The first patch that came up, I would just play it for an hour and then I'd be out of time and I'd turn it off. And, and I never explored it fully because I would just get so caught up in playing it. So I, I regret selling that one and, I, and I'd love to have it back. Uh, Mini Moog is always my favorite. Oh, man. I, I will never in my breathing days be without a Mini Moog again. And uh, yeah. It, you got one great. or multiple? I, I have a personal one. We have some that come and go through the shop, but yeah, mine, mine is always there. I've, <laughs> I've had several and, uh, and, and our light tech Gerald uh, refinished the wood and kind of went through that one and and it's got a MIDI interface in the back that was that was put on by uh, what was Bob Moog's company and after um, he lost his name uh, yeah uh, Big Briar Br uh, Big Briar Big Briar yeah so it has a Big Briar MIDI interface and that was back in the mm -hmm. day when Big Briar was just Bob Moog so I like to think that okay he personally put this in this right. in this mini Moog okay so it's it's kind of special to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you got two more to go. <laughs> two more to go. All right, you, you, you take uh, one in the meantime. Okay, I'll take one. So, 100% Mini Moog number one. Yeah. Yeah. My kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm shocked because a lot of famous synthesizer player, players don't bother getting one. And it's not like... Like it's like it's unreachable. Like you right, can get one right. for like three or four grand, four or five grand nowadays. Yeah. And uh, but you know if you consider you know guitar players, it's so easy to find like amateur guitar players who will have like a 1976 uh, Strats, and they probably spend eight or nine grand on it. Yeah. And yet <laughs> you see some of the biggest uh, keyboard players on the planet on stage with 
something less than a mini mug, and that kind of shocks me. Well, would you bring yours on stage if you were touring? I do. Of course I do. All right. Why, why They're wouldn't I? very robust. Yeah. Oh, I got a great Moog story. My, my first real synthesizer was a Moog satellite. I bought it used. Uh, you know, sounded not like a mini Moog, <laughs> but it was a Moog. And it was the only thing I had other than some cheesy little piano. Our, our sound guy set it down one day while he was getting some out of the truck and then back to the sound truck over the top octave right before a gig. So I had to take a screwdriver and pry up the top octave of keys. I played it on the gig that night. And but that's the thing. I mean, when you have a mini mog or you know that kind of synthesizer, you have to learn how to repair them yourself. Because if you if you you have to send it to service every time something happens, dude. Oh yeah. You know it's never ending. So I I am I am taking courage now and I open up my mini mog and touch it uh, when necessary. But otherwise, man, you can you can they you can plant nails with it. Yeah, that's they don't take great. a lot of a lot of maintenance. No. And they're they're very robust and sturdy. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's a bit surprising. Otherwise, of the ones that I have, obviously number two would be my Prophet 5. Mm. And it's a uh, version 3.2 for the Uber nerds on this channel. <laughs> and, um, of which we have plenty. Oh, exactly. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and it has MIDI. And I got this on Reverb.com, which is probably <laughs> Reverb.com might be single-handedly <laughs> be the reason why we'll never be rich in life. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something to buy there. <laughs> always something to buy there. Uh, uh, and it was, uh, you know, one of those like super well refurbished ones. But mm -hmm. even then, you know, it does need maintenance. You know, after yeah. a while, you know, some chips go and, and and that. But yeah, that that would be my number two. Ah. And yeah, and uh, I'm gonna throw a curveball. My number three would be the Juno Six because it's that's a great synthesizer. It's a great synthesizer. Yeah, it's like the, and so immediate, so easy to yeah, get around on. Yeah, yeah, and and um, and it's weirdly very very flexible. It's got very few controls if you really think about it. Yeah, that's true. It, right. Same with the Juno 106. Uh, yeah, I mean it's single oscillator. Yeah. There's not not that much to it, but yeah. an amazing array of sounds. I think a lot of that uh, being able to invert the envelope on the 106. Can you do that on the Juno 6? I don't remember. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, yes, I think that yes, that leads can. to a lot of stuff. And then all the sounds that you can get by self oscillating the filter. Yeah. All those submarine sonar sounds and. Yeah. Doo, doo, yeah. Doo, uh, yeah, it's, it's Do you know William sense. Orbit? You ever heard uh -huh. of him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, William Orbit is the guy who, amongst many things, has has produced uh, the Ray of Light album by Madonna, which is amazing. I don't care what anyone says about Madonna; that album is awesome. And um, and uh, yeah, that's a Juno 106 fest. Most of it is uh, is a Juno 106. He showed up apparently at the session with a. <laughs> we're talking about the 90s, right? So it's like late 90s, probably 98 mm -hmm. or 97 or something like that. And showed up with <laughs> with an Atari ST, and that, <laughs> and, you know, after like two, f f two, three, four days in the session, I think that Madonna herself tell, said, "Yeah, it's about time that you get a Mac." <laughs> you know, so I think that that's when he switched to an actual computer. <laughs> Only because well, people he swear by those, though. Hey, if it works and it make and you can make music with it, and William Orbit has apparently made some pretty acceptable music. So. No, no, it's not like the music made in the '80s on an Atari ST was any worse or any better than the music that we make now. So, yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love that you're with the Prophet Five. That that's it, it reminded me that there's one synthesizer in all synthesizers that I can remember the very first note I heard on it, and that was a Prophet 5. Uh, yeah. I went in a studio when I think they just came out and was doing a session, and here was this big, beautiful synthesizer. I mean, they are beautiful. Yeah. And I played the one bass note, and it's just like, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. And it sounds yeah. like those filters. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, you are actually the, 
the right person to ask this question because I was really torn uh, between buying like one with the Curtis chips that I think it's from version two and on. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, or version three and on, something like that. They use the SSM chips in version two and then switch to the Curtis, the Curtis in version, in version, version three. three. So I was very undecided. That's right, isn't it? I know the Rev 1 and the Rev 2 have SSM. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So do you find that there is a substantial <clears throat> difference as people on the internet seem to believe? Yes. Um, and yeah, the Prophet Rev 2 sounds great. And we sell a thing called the Rev minus one kit. That, that, that little circuit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you pull your Curtis chips out, you plug this circuit board in that has uh, actually surface mount SSM chips, and it gives it the sound of the Rev 2. I mean, the exact sound, but it also has other stuff where you can switch in uh, the Q compensation. You know, if, if you get a really resonant sound, you lose a lot of the bass sometimes. This compensates for that. So you put those you put those SSM chips back in and you can crank up that Q compensation and it's like big and huge and ballsy. Yeah, you should try it. Yeah, I'm, I'm already <laughs> I'm picturing myself buying it online. Who makes it? Uh, Analog Renaissance, the okay. same company that makes the Juno 106 replacement voice chips. So, but and, and when when where, I mean, where did they get the the original chips to do that? Um, they were able to do that as of a year or two ago when SSM SSI, uh, it's a new sound semiconductor incorporated is SSI. They're basically redoing the SSM chips. Oh, okay. Uh, but they're in surface mount. Okay. So uh, it's got to be a new circuit board and, and all that stuff. Got it. But it's but it's identical to the old stuff. Because that's those are the same chips chips in the new uh, SP twelve hundred Rossum, the Dick yeah. Rossum one. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. making a lot of new stuff possible, and they really sound good. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. So, um, modding vintage synthesizer, yes, or modding vintage synthesizers, no. <laughs> Prof uh, okay, okay. Prof putting that in a Profit Rev 3, yes, because it's, it's not to totally reversible. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one that had me on the fence, we did a uh, ARP Odyssey where we added a sub oscillator to each oscillator, okay. which really, really fattens it up. And I love the mod, but you got to drill holes in the front panel. ARP Odyssey. Yeah, I hate doing it, but yeah. there are still a lot of them out there, and yeah. it's, it's not quite sacrilegious, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had a Jupiter 8 come through the shop where someone had drilled all kind of holes in it and done mods, yeah. and it's like, oh, why, why, why? And, I, and we had a Yamaha, C no, we didn't have one. Uh, the Yamaha Museum has a CS80 that someone right. drilled the back panel out and put in a MIDI kit that works marginally or something. And Man, your CS8 video blew my mind when you went to Yamaha. Oh, that was incredible. Yeah, we, had, incredible. we had fun with that. Yeah. And we, we got busted because someone said, well, if you're the synth wizards, why didn't you just fix it? And it's like, well, sometimes a wizard has to think the smartest move is to let the smartest guy do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we, we went to someone that not only had immense experience with CS80s. Mm -hmm. He used to be on the road with Stevie Wonder, and Stevie Wonder had four of them, I think, that they'd cycle through as he'd fix yeah. three of them and have one going for of the course. show. And Because they uh, break all the time, right? Yeah, they're, I don't know about break, but you need to recalibrate them often, yeah. and, and that's not an easy task. No. Uh, so sometimes it's best to leave it to the trained professionals. and. Yeah. And we were smart enough to know that we're not the trained professionals in CS80s. So, man, it, it, that 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 thing is is a monster. I mean, just the, uh, yeah. when you open it up and you look inside of it, you go, "Okay, let me just close <laughs> it." <laughs> and, and how many hours did Japanese ladies spend looming those wires and wrapping them? And it's all so pristine and neat and 
Very perfect. If, if you have OC, OCD, you'll look at that thing and think, oh man, this is, this is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the synthesizer that is the number one most wanted synthesizer that I don't have. That's yeah, the one. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I was dumb. Uh, is there I a bad dumb. story here? It's a bad story yeah. because because I um, I find this CS80, uh, which was pretty much in great conditions. It has some blemish, blemishes here and there, but y you know when 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 you buy something like that, you are in for a long uh, yeah. trail of uh, uh, you know repair and service and, and all that. So I was ready for that. So. Um, I, um, of course, and, and they wanted 16,000 pounds. This was like four years ago, three or four years ago. So not, not a negligible amount of money. But not much for a CS80, because right, go, right. go try and get one now. And 16,000 pounds is what about? It's about, about 20 uh, grand, yeah. 21 grand yeah. US. And uh, so obviously I call up my bank immediately and I go, listen, uh, would you give me some money to buy a synthesizer? And I go, yep. Okay. So I go on eBay and I buy it. I literally bought it. Didn't pay for it yet. And then, and then I chickened out. And then I chickened out and I didn't get it. Uh, and I, you know, apologized to the guy and said, "Listen, I, it's not really, it's not really clever of me to just invest this much money in this machine." And fortunately, I didn't do it because I wouldn't have had credit enough to buy my recordings, my, my studio. Ah. Honestly, I mean, because yeah. I, I, when I got my studio, I like maxed out everything. I maxed out all my car, even credit cards I maxed out, yeah. you know, for the down payment, because the down payment was like stupid. In, in, in England, if you want to buy like a commercial business uh, premises, you have to pay 25% down, mm -hmm. not like 10% like, right. like, a, like a house. So you really have to come up with, with the money and they go, so this cash that you got, this is your cash, right? You didn't borrow it. No, no, I mean, yes, no, I mean, no, no, it's my. Give me the studio. <laughs> and, and turns out that uh, the undersigner was a fan of the channel. Oh, good. And he approved me. You, not west of England. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I fooled them into thinking that I could actually afford it. <laughs> well, I, I think you could because you made it work. And, yeah. And I mean, mm, at least yeah. from, from my perspective, it looks like it's working great. You're going like gangbusters. Yeah, no, it's, it's great, man. And, you know, it's, it's about, it's, you're investing in your in your life, so. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I call my synth room the synthesizer masturbatorium, <laughs> which is I think it's appropriate. We're gonna have to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but um, uh, but yeah, this is the dream, you know, and and uh, the fact that we have this great opportunity to make videos and. And, and have a community around us to support us and so that they can themselves live vicar vicari what? Vicariously. vicariously. Yeah. The, you know, the joy of getting synthesizer, making music, and, 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 and nerd out yeah. you know, about synths. This is great. You know, yeah. Life is awesome. You know, and for me, I mean, life is so good to me and you know, I'm, I'm so happy. I, I feel incredibly blessed to be doing what I'm so passionate about. And, and this time in, in history of keyboards and synthesizers, I mean, is there a better time to be into synthesizers? I can't imagine that there ever would yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah, you know, from the bleepy bleep um, community, uh, uh, modular world to the more, um, um, you know, musician-centric. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, there's so much happening, so exciting. Yeah, there's, there hasn't been a better time for synthesizer than now, I agree with you. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And, and I was just, as you were saying, bleepy bloops to uh, the musician, whatever, thinking digital pianos, uh, 10, 15, well, all right, 20 years ago, you wanted to get a good piano sound? Mm, 
yeah, that, that was the measure of a good instrument. Yep. Can it sound like a good piano? Yeah. Uh, and it was really hard. And, and now you can yeah. pay some absurd low amount of money and get a great sound in digital piano. Oh, yeah. So. Especially, especially with um, uh, soft synths. Yeah, yeah. Soft synths, because, you know, of course, the, some, sometimes people don't understand. When, when you have a li like a keyboard, like a synthesizer, you cannot press a button and wait one minute and a half for the <laughs> giga giga synth library to load up you know yeah. it's got to be instant you know so so that there, there are some some trade-offs there so in actual facts you know some soft synthesizers work better for pianos in the in in the box than in the synthesizer yeah, yeah. and and so but yeah i mean super powerful technology that we're dealing here today so yeah it's, it's exciting times yeah yeah well, I guess we're about out of time here. So, yep. man, it's been great to have you. And, and again, great to see you in 3D after all this time. <laughs> and, Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have you here. Yeah, likewise, Thanks. man. I'm so excited to, 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 to meet you and uh, keep on making those great videos yeah. and I'll keep on watching them, man. And you too, you got to keep Stevie Wonder entertained. So. Uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to write that story <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> all right, and with that, We'll bid you mind you later. <laughs> <laughs>